MTV Cribs was also staged. I think the only person who crib was actually theirs was Redman. When you get a chance, check that episode out. I seen a red man video. Y'all finna just ruin all my childhood shows, huh? Let me look at cribs. Y'all finna just ruin all my shows, bro. Wait a minute. The depressing truth about behind men vs. wild. What about it? What did this do? I didn't know it was this fake. <laughs> no way, bad girls lied to me. This is not how this stream's supposed to go, bro. Any other show, I don't care. That comment was posted to an early expose of Man vs. Wild Season 1, Episode 5, while Bear Grylls' other survival missions have featured everything from rented horses to volcanic landscapes what? created by smoke machines. We're gonna go over every available example where Bear Grylls might not have been telling the truth, including multiple responses from the man himself, so you can come to your own conclusion about whether or not the show was I'm calling real. The A TV survivalist caught cutting corners. This was the first example example of Bear Grylls being called out for fakery, and it came on the 24th of July 2007, just four days after the end of the first season. The article was written after Mark Wine- So Flash, you thought me, you, you, you knew Men vs. Wild was fake too, bro, bro? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to see, cause you sell me a beach. I did. Nigel boy, you, you, so y'all knew that too was fake, bro? I knew. Hell nah, you can't tell me when you seen that. I think I see. I... Nah, I can't bring it up because we're talking about what kind of community we are. Let's keep going, y'all. Inert, one of the show's consultants, came forward to talk about the ways in which the first season was staged. Mark began by explaining that while in the Sierra Nevada mountains, Grills was seen supposedly sleeping under a rock beside a small life-saving fire. On this little overhang here, here's all I've really got now. Our shelter for the night. It's not very nice. Yet in all actuality, Grills instead spent each night at the- OH NO! Pines Resort in Bass Lake, which was advertised as a cozy getaway for families and is a luxurious hotel with its own spa on a lake, as well as television, stone fireplaces, hot tubs, and internet access. However, this isn't the only part of the episode which has since been exposed as fake. Only a few minutes after waking from the campsite, which he apparently didn't even sleep at, Grills runs into a group of wild Mustang before talking about how unusual it was to see them out in the wild. A chance to use an old Native American mode of transport comes my way. And this is such a privilege to see that probably loose horses that have broken free maybe from a ranch. He spends the next couple of minutes gaining the trust of the wild horses Man, before yeah. trying to jump onto one without success, Man, which is interesting you. as a Bear Grylls breaking a wild Mustang was actually a choreographed scene shot with a domesticated horse from a nearby ranch. The post included a video which has sadly now been deleted, yet there are comments on other websites to back up the claim such as, the wild horses in the American West are uncombed skittish wild creatures with scrapes and cockle burrs, not the gentle manicured saddle horse. I mean, honest, this might sound dumb as hell. And I have no reason to like, just whatever. I didn't even think we had horses in the wild no more. Not in America. Them took all of them. So for me to see them, oh no. No bullshit facts. I'm sorry, huh? Listen to me. That's like me saying I'm seeing the goddamn cow in the wild. All them belong to somebody in America, bro. That's what I'm thinking, Trey. No, all y'all say know that you capping like a mother, bro. You not wrong. I know I'm not the only like that, bro. Hey, yo, y'all bugging y'all wild like a mother, bro. Ah, right, bro, come on now, bro. I don't, I don't even be hearing about wild horses anymore. Well, uh, let me tell you, when America decides they want something, them up took all them wild horses. Get your mother ass out here. CSU education, y'all know you not wrong. Thank you. Yo, I, I need to see, because it's a lot of people here trying to, yeah, it's telling me I ain't wrong. Trey, go outside. I am from Texas. 
I've driven across Texas. It was a, it was a, like a 10 hour trip. I ain't seen that one wild horse. They all behind Bob wire. They all behind Bob wire. Like, what are you talking about? He's telling me. Y'all lying. We thought them horses was captured. Yes, bro. It's too many in this line right now. Electric fences. Bob wire. That's what I'm saying. You not lying. Go to Wyoming. Who the f is in Wyoming? One wild horse in D.C. I know it ain't no motherfucking horse in D.C. Me. All right, bro. Get on the out of here. Get on the out of here. I got the video. I'm about to look this up. How many wild horses are out in the wild in America? But the horses that live on federal lands are just a fraction of the total wild horse population in the United States. There are around 300,000 free roaming horses across many different... Oh, 300,000. I thought they got all of them. Oh, hold on. Here go a video. No, no, that's actually wrong. That's actually wrong. The estimated population is compiled based on the results of common use wildlife survey methods and could be as low as 71,000 or as high as 96. Mother y'all is not seeing them horses in the wild. You is liars. These is liars. These is liars. Giddy up. You know how big this country is and it's only 71,000 wild horses? Ain't never seen a wild horse in your life. I'm calling it right now, unless you want them to that really be out there. I'm gonna send you a video of your DM city to me. Who oh, you you did not see no wild horse, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Now it didn't it's, it's a few in here that did it. It's a few that did, but most of you did not, bro. Stop, bro. Who said they sent me something about DM? Send it to me. Let me see. See, as you know, I'm from Texas. I don't see no wild horses in the 27 years of my life. But on, I have Kyla. seen a few years back just taking a night drive with a few of my family members just having fun and we saw a like, pack of wild hogs just out and about. Oh, wild hogs? I understand that, hogs. I seen deer. I seen I seen a wild I seen deer a lot actually. Kind of kind of crazy. But um Hogs K my um my ex's dad that them hogs up that shoot the shit them hogs <laughs> and was a hunter hunter i'm telling you bro the first time i ever seen a deer head in the goddamn garage it scared the fuck out of me y'all never seen deer heads hanging up for real like real ones them is big can't even do it bro all right let's finish the video which was seen in that episode alongside YouTube comments such as I grew up near Reno, Nevada and spent a lot of time watching wild horses. The proof that he never roped a wild horse, he's still alive. On top mm. of this, Mark Weiner then explained that season one, episode nine, in which Grills is supposedly surviving on a scarce desert island, was actually filmed off the coast of Hawaii oh where Grills spent God. his evenings in a motel. During the same episode, Grills can be seen making a bamboo raft on the beach which even included a fishnet sail Yet this was also debunked after Weinert explained he actually led a team of builders to construct the raft. It was then taken apart so that Grills could be shown building it on camera. However, it was season one, episode five on Mount Kilauea that was the most suspicious of them all. In the episode, Grills was supposedly walking on an active volcano shown by sulfur dioxide gas, which was steaming from the surface. Sulfur dioxide gas forms in volcanoes. And here, it's really thick. Look at this, you can actually see the sulfur dioxide here yeah. seeping out of these vents. However, after the episode went live, one of the show's safety instructors explained to the Sunday Times that the white clouds of poisonous sulfur dioxide that billowed around the former SAS Explorer were in fact harmless vapor created by smoke machines. Oh, no. And according to insiders, the red glow of Take the molten the magma which he wore- Hold on, let me see. Oh no, he, oh, 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 oh man, Bear grills, bro. When I see you, bro, I got words. I got plenty of words, man. Oh, there you go. What this is? Yeah, wild horse. 
Some wild horses. I'm recording a selfie. Oh shit, oh, nigga, don't come over here, my boy. Nigga, you on your bad grill, shit. That shit fake, nigga. This nigga on his bad grill and said, you can't fool me. I'm a partner. I'm We got one nigga in this bitch. I did say we was going to have one. We found one nigga. We found one nigga. I ain't going to lie. We found one, but shit. We got about 600 niggas in here at least. I don't know how many watching. It's 600. It's one out of the 600. Matter of fact, but let me be honest. If I had to guess, probably 50 out of the 600, I'm dead serious. 50 out of the 600, that's it. No more than that. And I do not think it's any more than that. Oh, we got 900. If it's 900, 55 out of the 900. Only 55. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going up in a good ratio, nigga. 55 out of the 900 seen a wild horse for real. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. All right, boom, let's finish this. What could incinerate him in seconds was supplemented by burning hot coals brought in by members of the production team. Sulfur dioxide fumes are colorless and you can't see it, so smoke generators were used off screen to make the existing fumes seem visible. Later shit. in the episode, Grills talks about being far from civilization before explaining that crossing the terrain was dangerous due to lava cracks in the ground. Crossing these fragile fissures can be dangerous, but there is a way to do it. Sometimes you get these, no these lava get bridges to cross them over but you've got to be really really careful crossing these just because you don't know what's solid and what's hollow underneath However, when a YouTuber called Volcano Chaser uploaded a video titled Rayman vs Wild Bear Grills is a Phony, this segment was also debunked. Oh, the video God. showed that just behind the camera, the lava crack came to an end and could have simply been walked around. Ah, you bitch! You could have kept walking straight, Bear. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh my god, this show is a fraud. Oh no, bro. Came even worse after it was shown that Grills was not far from. Oh, and this car is over there. That's a minivan. That's like the bit from Pit My Ride. <laughs> bro. Bear civilization and was rather right next to a major highway. To add a cherry on top of the cake, the video description exposed other parts of the episode by stating, most of the scenes in the show don't exist in the area he was supposed to be in. Avocado trees, lava tube, tropical forest, fissures, and landing site are all in different parts of the island and separated by up to 50 miles. I've hiked this area hundreds of times. These fissures are unique to a small area on the summit. That nigga and got 5 million views on Barry. That nigga dropped that nigga the fuck off. Very popular to tourist viewing area. They're only a few hundred feet long and easy to go around. Only the phony bear seems to have trouble crossing them. The fishes are located next to the parking area where cars can be seen on the crater rim drive shown on the clip, although there was still more trickery that wasn't being made obvious to the audience. Survival expert Nick Vrumans worked with Bear Grylls on season one, episode 13 in the Australian Outback, after which Nick stated that even the script itself was pre-planned. He'd expand on this by stating everything you see in the show you set up i built now, wait a minute i didn't seen bear grills pick up some dookie and squeeze it and drink it let's just be honest i'm sorry i know the narrative in the community but i saw that shit he'd say he was out of water and he squeezed the shit and drunk it now either they woke up and was like yeah bear i ain't gonna lie you squeezing mo you squeezing shit today or these niggas painted a sponge. Or got some wet ass clothes and put them bitches real brown and he lied to us. Nigga, I'm eating. What they gotta do with me? I ain't eating. Bad grills. I know your motherfucking ass didn't lie to me like this, bro. If they faking dookie for the TV, it's insane. Tim shelters and found him snakes to eat. On the show broadcast to Europe and the US. I'm sorry, run that back. 
it up. I built him shelters and found him snakes to eat. On the show broadcast to Europe and the US, you see him catch a snake, kill it, and eat it. But it was actually two snakes. A roadkill that I found which he was shown beating on the head and eating, and then a live olive python that a wildlife carer had been rehabilitating, oh. which was followed by rumors also exposing the segment where Grills was almost attacked by a crocodile stating, the whole crew was petrified of the crocodiles. Bear didn't want to get anywhere near the water, so we filmed a setup of him like he was near a crocodile when he was actually a safe distance away. You, you, I was a bit miffed when I saw the finished show. Days, As a result of the media ripping each episode to shreds, Bear Grylls was given a chance to respond to the controversy during a live talk show. And then we heard somebody complaining that they said, no, no, he's, he's down the road at the Motel 6. He's... <laughs> He's not really out there surviving. The way we film these things is over over six days. And, um, and when I'm filming the live night stuff out, I'm out whether, you know, it's in a camel carcass or up a tree. Mm -hmm. And then when we're not filming the light, night stuff, I'll stay with the crew, you know, wherever that is, whether it's in a, you know, tented camp area in the Sahara or a jungle lodge you know, in a rainforest or whatever. Grills would then issue a public apology stating, if people felt misled on how the first series was represented, I'm really sorry for that. He added, I'm the person that takes the rap for these things, even though I'm not always involved in the editing I side of it, it which is followed by the show promising to be 100% transparent going into the future. To cover themselves, the second season opened with a disclaimer. However, it's not like this did anything to convince viewers of the show's authenticity. If I had to choose one person to be stranded on a desert island with, it would be Bear Grylls. Hell that nah. way he would have his crew with him and they'll Oh, okay, all right, bet. They'll probably pay for us to stay in a nice hotel. You know what, you're right. I, that's a good answer. Watch Call of the Wild Realist nigga out of all theses, motherfuckers. Call of the Wild? I, I actually never seen it. Something which became... A hey, have y'all ever seen that show? I think it's called Naked and Afraid or something like that. Like, I never watched it because, like, the title looks stupid as fuck. Um... But I think I watched it last summer. That show is actually fucking hilarious. You hear me? That show is fucking hilarious, dog. It was one dude. Basically, what they do is they just have people they, they like like they be fucking like naked and they send him out in, in the wild to survive. One dude, he act like he was like just a total expert in how he was gonna survive. I think this nigga got like he was fucking with some with some with some uh with some plants he wasn't supposed to be touching. React to it? Nah, because they, they, they blurred the, the new shit, but Twitch gonna be tripping. He was fucking with some plants he wasn't supposed to be touching. That nigga foot swelled up and they got him the fuck out of there, dog. Bro, that show, I'm keeping it a hundred. That shit is actually funny, though. But Bear Grylls, you gotta get the fuck, bro. You gotta get the fuck. Even worse, after the show was exposed for a different stunt. During the episode in the African savannah, no! Grills is shown squeezing Ooh. water out of yeah. elephant dung, which by itself didn't seem all that nigga, that shit is nasty. I told y'all. He was squeezing some dude. Yeah. I told y'all, bro. All that troublesome. However, when Canadian survival expert Les Stroud, host of the show Survivor Man, responded to the episode in a Reddit AMA, he debunked the strategy by stating, many of the actual survival skills taught are bogus. It's not possible to squeeze drinkable water out of elephant dung. Well, it is if your cameraman has soaked Lionel it with Reach bottles. just resubscribed for 29 months. Lionel, appreciate you, gang. Water. I would even go so far as to say that some of the skills, if followed and attempted in a real survival situation, could result in worsening the situation. With this comment coming alongside a few instances, somewhere on the planet, uh, somebody was uh, was stranded. And was like, damn, what would Bear do? Instances of let seeing some doodle when squeezed that bitch, and they are no longer with us. <laughs> There are no longer with us. Bear Grylls got a body on his head. Oh. Oh. Bear Grylls got a body on his head, bro. Nah, dog. Nah, this nigga's terrible, bro. I can't believe this motherfucker, bro. Result in worsening the situation, with this comment coming alongside a few instances of Les Stroud dissing Man vs. Wild for its lack of authenticity. I was wondering if you've ever had the opportunity to meet Bear Grylls. I haven't, because I'm out overnight and there's nobody else out there. What are your thoughts on Bear Grylls? <laughs> if you wanted to learn about archaeology, would you get it from Harrison Ford? A lot of fresh water around here. It's a good thing, too. Otherwise, I'd be reduced to uh, probably having to drink my own pee. <laughs> yeah, right. There are YouTube videos as well as food-grown <laughs> websites. I think on Bear Grylls' ass!
used to uh, probably having to drink my own pee. <laughs> yeah, right. There are YouTube <laughs> videos as well as full-blown websites dedicated to the poor advice that Bear Grylls has given, with many stating that this constitutes fakery, while others have made the point that Grylls was simply showing survival techniques, and it therefore didn't matter if the shots were set up or not. It's a show to teach you how to survive certain <laughs> yeah, scenarios. Right. To have every survival stunt to be real every single episode would be both dangerous and illogical. He teaches survival techniques. It's obviously irrelevant if he's really facing those perils on I can't stand uh uh just a, a cape for a nigga ass nigga bro get out of here bitch bear don't need your help not the point is it's entertaining and informative he was teaching people how to survive if they were in that situation as if he well then he taught a nigga to pick up some elephant shit and squeeze it now the nigga's dead come on now He's not risking his life for a freaking TV show. Whether or not setting up the shots constitutes fakery is up for debate. However, a YouTuber by the name of Lo The Show seems convinced that even when set up, a different Bear Grylls stunt is completely impossible. Eating a snake. Even the guts and skin on it. You can eat them straight like this. Oh my God, I've seen this episode. Damn, bro, that's a real snake. Wait a minute, Bear was... If you knew Bear was faking, why are you eating this like that? That motherfucker hard. Not possible. <laughs> Although in other episodes, Bear Grylls has shown himself eating snakes in their entirety, Ooh, so I wouldn't shit. call the video by Low the Show all that much of a debunk. However, if we want slightly better evidence, we have to look at a video posted by Justin Wallace titled Climber Cringe Bear Grylls Confirmed Top Roper. Justin, who's clearly an avid climber, spends the video criticizing an advertisement in which Bear Grylls is climbing a difficult route in Utah. Grylls is shown to be- Oh my God, I've seen this video. I've seen this episode. Using all the wrong gear. Guess we're using the Mountaineer's coil, which you don't really do, especially when you're track climbing in Moab because it just kinks up your rope. Sorry, bud, but a single wire gate on your harness isn't gonna do much for you. Time. Let me tell you what. It's nothing like, he said, fucking nerd, oh my God, nerd. No, let me tell you what. Move my camera, I got you. It, nigga called him a dweeb. No, y'all niggas is wildin'. It's nothing like when an expert in the field that you don't know about start to shit on the stupid shit you doing. That's when you realize, oh, I ain't gonna lie. Bear Grylls is fraud. Y'all niggas finna make fun of this nigga, but bro, he really like, when, when you really know your shit and they start watching, they be like, yo, I can't believe people believe this dumbass. You can't use a triple C wire. Bear Grylls, this, this nigga is exposed. But a single wire gate on your harness isn't gonna do much for you. Tying all the wrong knots. What the hell knot is that? <laughs> Kinda looks like a bowline, but not really. And even climbing the wall incorrectly. I don't even see his last piece. He's like 40 feet run out right there. You're gonna die, man. <laughs> oh, and there's so many good placements too. What is he doing? There's Nerd. no way he is holding his body weight with that one hand in that crack. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Who the fuck are you, Michael Jordan? This nigga hitting the jump man on a damn rock. Right there. And his two feet are just sticking out on nothing. His crew is definitely pulling his fat ass up there on a three to one. There's no way. Ah, ah, y'all niggas hating on this nigga. Let me tell you what, y'all niggas hating on bro. Bro ain't do nothing. Bro exposed him. <laughs> I know, bro. His crew is no. definitely pulling his fat ass up there on a three to one. There's no way he's climbing that. The original rock climbing video has a dislike ratio of almost 75% and features comments such as, gotta give him credit for really committing to the BS. Interesting skills he has in climbing. This is just ridiculous. Wow, it could be impressive if it was not fake. As a climber, it's obvious that the heli dropped him at the top and he made some shots rappelling down. Oh I used to God. like him, disappointing. You could make the argument that Grills gets a pass 
pass given it was filmed for an advertisement. But does he get a pass for an article titled Bear Grylls Show Accused of Fakery Again after the island's ordinary men exposed as trained professionals? According to the article, the island by Bear Grylls introduced what was supposed to be 13 ordinary men are about to be abandoned on a Pacific island with just the clothes they stand up in and a few tools. But there was no mention that Rupert Smith had worked in war zones in extreme environments, including alongside Grylls as director of Channel 4's Escape to the Legion. Similarly, there was no introduction to cameraman Dan Etheridge, who also worked with Grylls on Discovery Channel's Man vs. Wild. Kiff McManus, a sound recordist with 10 years experience in some of the world's most dangerous places, also failed to get a mention. Okay. The article also revealed that two Cayman crocodiles had been manually released Yo, Anonymous, thank you for the get this up. ...onto the island. Damn, that nigga ugly as a bitch. ...and that the rare source of fresh drinking water found by those on the show was actually a rubber line pool set up by the production crew. Channel 4 responded to the featuring of trained professionals by stating, It clearly states in the program voiceover that trained crew are part of the experiment, living under the exact same conditions as the other men. Like all of the men on the island, their professions are captioned on screen and their backgrounds are discussed. It's good in the motherfucker though. I, I think I tried Gator once. It was okay. Like, it's... It's, it's like... I don't know if I would just eat the shit again. Like, it's just other shit you can eat. Uh, yo, call me. Thank you so much, gang. Just call me underscore re just Oh, converted prime into a sub. Yo, thank you, my G. Biographies of Gator Bites. Gator not bad. No, it's not bad. It's not bad, bro. Uh, what does it taste like, bro? A lot of the time, bro, bro, you got to realize, bro, that shit tastes like the, like, the batter you're putting it on. I know that might sound so stupid, like, but I can't tell you what it tastes like because it's all depending on, it all depends on how it's prepared. Um, and it like depend on what seasons and shit you put on there. They're also on the channel okay. four website before going on to address the crocodiles and drinking water by stating like chicken. No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so, bro. We had to ensure the island's only water supply, a muddy pool, would last through filming in the dry season, and that there was enough native animals and native vegetation that could sustain the men for 28 days, as long as they had the ingenuity to find it, <laughs> catch it, and kill it, which you have to admit is a pretty decent statement. I ain't gonna lie, these were some good fucking videos. Bear Grylls, you're a piece of shit.